Hi guys, welcome back to Engineered's YouTube channel. My name is Patricia Bermudez and I will be your host for today's video. And for today's video, we will be continuing on open systems. And for this one, we will be focusing on turbines. So the problem states that a turbine operates under steady flow conditions, receiving steam at the following state. Pressure is equals to 1.2 megapascals. Temperature is equals to 188 degrees Celsius. Enthalpy is equal to 2,785 kilojoules per kilogram. Velocity is equals to 33.3 meters per second. And there is an elevation of 3 meters. The steam leaves the turbine at the following state. Pressure is equivalent to 20 kilopascals. Enthalpy is equivalent to 2,512 kilojoules per kilogram. There is a velocity of 100 meters per second, and there is no more elevation. Heat is lost to the surroundings at the rate of 0.29 kilojoules per second. If the rate of steam flow through the turbine is 0.42 kilograms per second, what is the power output of the turbine in kilowatts? Okay, so yung actually yung heat natin is also in kilowatts kasi kilojoules per second siya. So ayan. So, since it is an open system, we have to use the open system energy balance. And the formula for that is... U plus work is equals to the change in kinetic energy plus the change potential energy plus the change in enthalpy. Okay? So now we're going to draw a turbine. So a turbine is actually the opposite of a compressor. So the diameter at the entrance is, is smaller than the diameter at the exit. So nag expand malaki yung diameter, which is opposite of a compressor. So here, we know that there is an elevation of 3 meters. So papasok siya here. And this is equivalent this height here is equivalent to three meters and then it exits na wala nang height so zero meters siya. okay zero meters and we're gonna list down the um, properties at the entrance and then at the exit so at the entrance ang property natin ay pressure is 1.2 megapascal and then temperature natin is 188 degrees celsius and then yung enthalpy natin is 2785 kilojoules per kilogram and yung enthalpy yan. and yung velocity is 33.3 meters per second and there is an elevation here and then at the exit, yung velocity natin is 100 meters per second. And then yung pressure natin is um, 20 kilopascals. And then yung temperature is, no, walang given. So, wala siyang given na temperature. And then yung enthalpy natin is 2,512 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay? So, in this problem, in this equation here, meron tayong Q, meron tayong work. Ang Q natin pala is um, negative 0 0.29 kasi heat is lost to the surrounding, meaning, nawawala ng heat yung turbine and therefore it is negative. So, yung Q natin here is negative 0 0.29 um, kilojoules Per second. And then we have a mass flow rate of 0 0.42 kilograms per second. And yung work, yung unknown, which is yun yung hanapan natin here. So we have Q plus work. Yung change in kinetic energy natin is the change in velocity, which is delta V squared over 2 GC plus yung change in potential energy natin, which is G which is the gra gravitational acceleration, and then over GC times yung height difference, or delta H, actually. So, it's the change in height. 
and then you have enthalpy, which is just delta H. And here, um, hindi naman natin gagamitin yung pressure kasi it's not involved in the equation here. Wala namang pressure here, di ba? And wala ding temperature kasi yung heat naman is given na. So we can't use that to find an unknown here. So eto, etong properties eto, we don't need them. So mapaglo lang siya. And you don't have to find T at the exit kasi you don't need T anymore. You don't need T at all. In terms of SI units, yung GC natin is equals to 1 times um, kilogram meter per second squared newtons. But then we know that newton is equals to kilogram um, times um, acceleration due to gravity, which is meters per second squared. So if we're going to substitute this here, we know that GC for SI units is 1 times kilogram meter per second squared times kilogram meters per second squared. And you can see na makakancel yung units and it'll just be equivalent to 1. Cancel yung kilogram, cancel yung meter, so cancel yung second squared. So yung GC natin is 1. So for this problem, since we're dealing with SI units, we can um, um, just cancel off GC kasi it's just equal to 1. Okay? So simplifying the equation, we have Q plus work is equals to V2 my squared minus V1 squared over 2 plus G times yung change in height natin, which is H2 minus H1. And then the change in enthalpy, which is H2 minus H1. Okay? And here, ito yung H1 natin. Um... And here, this is our H1. And then this is our H2. Ito is actually V1. This is H1. And then this one is V2. And this one is H2. Okay? So, we just have to substitute what we have found. So, yung Q natin is equal to um, 0 points negative 0 0.29 kilojoules per second was yung work natin, which is unknown. And then, ang V2 natin is 100 meters per second, and this one is squared, minus yung V1 natin, which is 33.3 meters per second, and this one is squared also, over 2. And then yung G, which is the acceleration due to gravity, which is 8.8 meters per second squared, times yung change in height, which is yung h natin is 0, minus 3, yung h1 natin, meters. And then, yung, dito ko itutuloy sa ilalim, change in enthalpy natin, which is um, 2, 5, 1, 2, minus yung h1, which is Ito, 2785. 2785. And the units for this one is kilojoules per kilogram. Okay? And from here, we can see na inconsistent yung units. It's inconsistent. Ito, meters squared per second squared kasi squared. Ito, meters squared din kasi m times m is meters squared over second squared. Ito, consistent. But how about this one? We have to convert this into the same units here. And we know that meters squared per second squared is actually equals to joules per kilogram. Kasi yung joules natin is newton meter over kilogram and yung newton natin is kilogram times meter over um, second squared and then yung meter squared here so maging square siya and then yung kg na nasa denominator and we know na makakancel yung kg. And we can verify that meter squared per second squared is equal to joules per kilogram. Okay, and this one, kilojoules per kilogram. How are we going to convert this to meters squared per second squared? So, we're going to multiply this by conversion factors. So, we know that um, 1 kilojoules is equal to 1,000 joules. And equal na siya sa joules per kilogram. Okay, so from here, 
we can know, we, we know that it's consistent already. Kasi meters squared per second squared, tas ito, meters squared per second squared, and ito ay joules per kilogram, which is equal to meters squared per second squared. So yung right-hand side ng equation natin ay consistent already. How about the left-hand side? We have kilojoules per second. So what are we gonna do to get joules per kilogram? And we have to divide this by the mass flow rate. We have to divide by mass flow rate. Kasi we know that um, kilojoules per second and our mass flow rate is equals to kilogram per second, right? So if you divide this by the mass flow rate, so divide by kilojoule, kilogram per second, then dahil you have to change this into multiplication, then it will become kilojoules per second times um seconds per kilogram. And maka cancel yung second, matitira ay kilojoules per kilogram. And if we convert this here like this, if we, if we uh, multiply by conversion factor, we know that 1 kilojoules is 1,000 joules. And therefore, it will be joules per kilogram, which is the unit here as well. So, consistent on both sides if we divide this by the mass flow rate. So, that's what we're going to do now. We have Q, right? And we have to divide it by the mass flow rate. So, our Q is negative 0 0.29 kilojoules per um, second times your divided by the mass flow rate, which is equal to um, 1 second is divided by 0 0.42 kilogram. And since we're dealing with joules per kilogram here, kasi ito is meter per second squared and it's equivalent to joules per kilogram, you have to convert kilojoules to joules as well. So yung, yung kilojoules natin, 1 kilojoule is equi equivalent to 1,000 joules. So ayan. And then you plus yung work natin, which is also divided by the mass flow rate here. And then all these is equivalent sa dito. It's equivalent here in this part of the equation. So simplifying the values, we have 100 squared minus 33.3 .3 squared divided by 2 is equal to 4,000. 445.555. And the, and the units here is in meters squared per second squared, which is, which is equivalent to joules per kilogram. Okay? And then we have the change in um, potential energy, which is plus 9.81 times negative 3. 9.81 times negative 3, which is equal to Negative 29. Negative 29.43. Again, meters squared per second squared. So it'll be joules per kilogram. And then tutuloy ko siya here. Plus yung um, change in enthalpy natin here. Which is 2512 minus 2785. And then you multiply that by 1000. And you get negative 273,000. Negative 273,000 joules per kilogram. And consistent by yung units natin? Yes. Kasi um, here, makakancel yung seconds, makakancel yung kilojoules. Ano, matitira? Joules per kilogram. And then here, lahat sila ay nakajoules per kilogram. So, yung units on one side of the equation is equal to the units on the other side. So, you can verify that this um, equation is dimensionally homogeneous. So, now we're just, we just have to um, find work, right? So, yung work natin is equal to all of this. So, simplify muna natin tong um, right-hand side. This one. So, simplifying, we have 4445.55. Minus 29.43 minus 273,000. So we have negative 268,583.875. And the units I for this one is kilojoules. Joules per kilogram 
And then, ima-minus natin this one. Kasi we want to transpose this on the other side. And dahil negative siya here, it will become positive. Okay? So, negative 0 0.29 divided by 0 0.42 times 1,000. So, yung negative 690 natin magiging positive when transposed to the other side. So, positive 690.476.1905. And yung, anong units natin? Joules per kilogram. Okay? And ito ah, itong value na to is dito na equation. Dito, dito siya nakuha. Here. So, dahil yung work in this equation is divided by the mass flow rate, yung mass flow rate natin ay kailangan natin intraspose din on the other side. So, yung divided, yung divide ng mass flow rate when transposed to the other side will become multiply. So, this one, this whole equation here, we multiply by the mass flow rate. And ano ang mass flow rate natin? Ang mass flow rate natin ay 0 0.42 kilograms per second. And from here, you can see na um, makakancel yung kilogram. Kasi kilogram, makukuha natin yung joules per second. Okay, so ang work natin then becomes negative 112,515 point 2275 and the unit is um joules per second but since the problem is asking for the power output which is work per sec work per unit time na but it is asking for it in kilowatts so in joules per second convert natin siya sa um kilojoules per second so there is 1000 joules per 1 kilojoule and we know that 1000 1 kilojoule per second is equivalent to 1 kilowatts so here makakancel na yung makakancel yung joules and yung kilojoules per second makakancel here ano matitira kilowatts so that is a unit that is being asked for in the problem so answer divided by 1000 times 1 so ang work natin is negative 112.5152275 kilowatts and that is or solution for the problem. And we can verify that our answer is correct kasi ang work for turbine, um, work for turbines and expanders I negative. And the, our answer is negative. So we can verify that this indeed is correct. So, yep, I hope you learned a lot from today's video. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for the next one. Bye-bye.